What's more, they brought the art of smelting to the north. They added a vital secret from the Middle Eastern trading routes. Mix some tin to copper and you get bronze. This process was so important, the smiths had the richest graves. They were probably clan chiefs. At the beginning of the Bronze Age, you can imagine that much of the metalworking was actually undertaken by the chiefs themselves. And we now see this as a rather sort of banal task that should be undertaken by, by workmen or, or craftsmen, by sort of lower status people. But if you think of it as the magical transformation of one thing into another, then it's another way of showing off and demonstrating your power and your status and securing your, your role in society. And so it's therefore very characteristic that you find the moulds in rich graves, in the graves of the chiefs. So the people who are in charge of society are in charge of the transformation of oars into flashing daggers and, uh, and, and, and weaponry. Bronze Age consists in the introduction of edge weapons that you couldn't make effectively in stone, daggers that increasingly get longer and longer and become swords, spearheads that, that can be really effectively fixed on the end of a long pole. So the whole nature of armament was transformed by the introduction of a really effective working metal, bronze. These weapons exude power. They are rare and dangerous. We are seeing the birth of a military elite with the power to get exactly what they want. Yet the weapons rarely show signs of use. Perhaps they were purely ceremonial. These leaders wore breastplates and decorative metal jewellery, again as symbols of their wealth. 